Okay. All right. We got people joining us here on Zoom as well. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Thursday to you. And congratulations to everyone for hopping on on time because last time I think we about maxed out and I got a lot of emails from people who couldn't get in. So you're all here. You all made the cut. So that's exciting. Uh, we may need to up our, our webinar game here. We got a lot of people trying to get on now. So I don't know. I kind of like that limited seating capacity too, though. It gives a little I bit know. more of a premium for people to uh, join early. So True. yeah. And I don't think we could handle everybody's questions like if we had over a hundred people on the call so that is true too many questions for the good doc but we are making a frequently asked questions videos um we've got a few posted on bartonwebinar.com which reminds me i need to go look at that so bartonwebinar.com that's the place you want to check out and register if you're not already to join us live on zoom here and let's see yeah we've got four frequently asked questions on there so I'll just go over them quick while we're waiting for uh, uh, to continue here. Dr. Saunders will be joining us any second, but the uh, FAQs on BartonWebinar.com are sweeteners. Okay. And what kind of sweeteners? Uh, all right. Next question. Why are my blood sugars higher in the mornings? That is a good question. You get asked quite a bit. How is diabetes like a clogged kitchen sink? That's a great analogy um, that Dr. Saunders has told in the past really good at understanding why people get diabetes and how to fix it. Kind of like fixing a clogged sink. And then when do I move on to phase two of the diabetes solution kit? So that's our current top four FAQs. And there he is, Dr. Saunders. Good morning. Good morning. You have a naked person behind you. <gasps> I do. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I got, I got naked people all over the wall. So. <laughs> Uh, how are we doing this morning? Well, it's a great morning here. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty yeah. nice here as well. The sun is shining. I think it's above freezing. So I'm, yeah. I'm liking that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, good. Well, today we're going to cover the type 2 basics again uh, every other week going through the diabetes solution kit, the, uh, the program here, phase 1, phase 2, and phase 3. And so um, let's just, hey, if you're joining us live on Zoom, hop in the chat, say hello, tell us where you're from, tell us how your week is going. We'd like to hear from you guys. Always good to uh, interact with you. I think one of these days we're going to have to have, try to get people to join us on video. Uh, maybe not unmuted, but it'd be kind of fun to see everybody and then, uh, get a feel for that. So I've been taking part of this week. I'm um, part of a marketing event that's being held virtually on zoom and it's there's like 240 some people that are on zoom together all at one time and you can see their videos if they if they have their videos turned on so that's kind of fun so maybe we'll do that here we're learning we're exploring new things so um and then also if you're watching us live or if you're joining us right now um feel free to start bringing us your questions in the q a section on zoom that's probably the best place for us to keep track of the questions and to make sure that we get your question asked for Dr. Saunders here. So um, let's see, we also like to do a quick disclaimer, which is basically saying that um, the information or the, those, this webinar is for informational purposes only. And, you know, each person is unique and different. And so we don't know whether or not, you know, your situation, um, what it is specifically. So we always say, Work with your own healthcare professional uh, for your things, but we do provide information that is helpful on a general general level. And uh, Dr. Saunders, you can you can talk a little bit more about that, and then let's let's get rolling. Let's get into take two. So, okay. Um, so uh, 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 going through those uh, top four <clears throat> FAQs, frequently asked questions, um, is. Uh, uh, the sink analogy, you know, the overflowing sink. Uh, and, and that is the best uh, way of looking at type two because, because type two is a disease of too much. Remember there's two different types of diabetes mellitus uh, and that is sugar diabetes, problems with the sugar, or sugar being elevated in the blood. There's actually, there's actually two different reasons and in a sense they're opposite. The type one diabetes 
is where the pancreas doesn't produce insulin. And if you don't have insulin, you can't get sugar, sugar primarily, but also amino acids into your cells to, to do all the things the cell needs to do so you won't have energy. Uh, what happens if you don't have any insulin, then you can't make energy and your cells start using up all they have. They start using the proteins inside of the cell itself and using up all the energy and then they use up all the fat and then there's nothing left and the cell dies. And so what, what happens to people with type one is they starve to death no matter how much they eat because they can't get the energy and the, the protein into their cells to be useful. So uh, eating isn't good enough. So, the, so literally before insulin was discovered to be injected into the body, um, the people with type one would waste away and die of starvation, even, even while they're eating. Um, that was one way of dying. There's other things too, of course. But, um, but type two is an entirely different process. Type two is, is, is completely a disease of too much too much insulin, too much sugar, too much fat, uh, too much protein. It's too much of everything. So, uh, so the, this, the sink analogy fits perfectly where you have this overflowing sink. Now, what is the overflowing? Well, that's the excess sugar in your blood and spilling into your urine. So, the, so high blood sugar, high urine, that's, that's the water that, you know, the sink is overflowing and the, the floor is filling up with water. So, so then you go to your doctor and your doctor says, well, we got to mop up that sugar, the, the, you know, your, your blood sugar so that, uh, to get the blood sugar down. And that's just like mopping up the floor. So, so the doctor says, mop the floor. Uh, so you're mopping away and then, uh, and then your blood sugar starts going up and they give you another drug to mop up a few more, um, a little more uh, glucose sugar in the, that's, that's spilling over into your blood. And, uh, and, and then, so you're mopping with two mops and then they give you another one and now you have three mops. And, and what you're doing is trying to get the sugar down to normal in the blood. And then that, that's like mopping up the water on the floor. But no one ever talks about, um, why don't you just go shut off the water? You know, it's, it's really not that hard. Um, shutting off the water is what the diabetes solution kit is all about. The diabetes solution kit is how do you shut off the water? Now, I know it's not the only way to shut off the water. Um, it's a good way and multiple studies have shown it works. And we have thousands of people uh, who've done it, who, who say, absolutely, this works. I did it. And in a matter of weeks, I was down to normal. My blood sugar was normal. I'm not mopping up floors anymore because the sink isn't spilling over anymore. So, so that analogy is, is really a good analogy on, on how to look at the blood sugar. So how does the diabetes solution kit work? Well, um, so what we do is we give you a, a low carbohydrate diet. So if, you're, you, if you have the kit and you're looking at it and you look at phase one, uh, phase one is the way you uh, limit so much your carbohydrates that you're not getting enough carbohydrate to run your body on a full day. You can't run your body on 20 grams of carbohydrates. There's just not enough energy there. So, uh, so then what has to happen? Well, the body says, uh, we don't have enough energy in the, in the sugar. So we're going to have to start using other things. And the secondary energy supply is fat. So the body starts burning fat. You know, many of you are on metformin. Metformin is a drug that blocks your mitochondria from using sugar for energy and kind of uh, forces the body to use. And so it works in a, a lot of different areas of the body. But one of the problems with that is when you block the mitochondria from doing a specific job, like using sugar, you can do injury to the body. So people can get... Um, pains in their legs, their muscles don't work very well, especially in their legs, but any muscles, uh, muscle pains and aches because the muscles aren't getting enough energy. You can get spasms because there's not enough energy to relax the muscles and it could also cause liver damage. So some people who are susceptible to that 
um, may not want to be on metformin because there are side effects. There are problems with it. It's not a, it's not totally benign because it is a poison, like all medicines are poisons. Um, it, so it blocks the normal function of the mitochondria. So instead of doing that, we give you a, a program where because you have a disease of too much, you shut off the water. So you don't have too much flowing in anymore. And uh, there are other ways of doing it. So we talked uh, a few weeks ago, we had a, um, a webinar on uh, the, the best diet for, for human beings. And, and basically it's a high fiber diet. And so it, even the people who have done the research like Dean Ornish and Dr. McDougall, uh, uh, Dr. Furman, they've all done research on a, a low fat diet. If you cut out all the fat and they mean all the fat, like you can't even have an avocado. It's, it's low, low fat. Like, uh, like you're getting only what would be in the, the, the lettuce. Uh, you can't put any oil, very, very, very fat restricted diet then uh, uh, does essentially the same thing. You can, you can stop it from happening. Uh, for stop the blood sugar because fat makes you resistant to insulin and you're not getting enough fat to run your body on. So the body switches and does just carbohydrates. Uh, and that works. That'll lower your hemoglobin A1C. It'll lower your blood sugar. Uh, your, your insulin resistance will drop down and, and it'll look better. So there's more than one way to, to, to do this, but every single way we've talked about fasting. We had a whole webinar on fasting. Uh, intermittent fasting or long-term fasting. And that works too, because no matter how you look at it, the sink is overflowing. How are you going to shut off water? And, and so we use the, uh, the low carb diet. Uh, it's simple, it's easy, and people feel satiated. Um, people on, the, on a very low fat diet, they often don't feel satiated. They're just like hungry all the time, eating and eating and eating. And this is like, well, you know, I can, I can eat a meal with some fat and then I'm, I feel good. I'm okay. Uh, so uh, this, is, this one can apply to the broadest group of people. Um, but one of the things, one of the caveats uh, in there is to make sure you're getting enough uh, fiber. So uh, a lot of people look at that and say, oh, I can eat all the fat I want. And so they live on um, eggs, bacon, and sausage. And then, uh, uh, for lunch, they have, a, you know, a, a cheese omelet, uh, and then they have a, a big slab of meat. Uh, and, and yeah, they're not eating any carbohydrates, uh, but they're not getting any fiber in their diet either. So getting the fiber in is all the vegetables that you can eat uh, that are free. So when you look on the list, it, it has a list of these foods are free. And lettuce is on the list, spinach is on the list, broccoli, and so if you're eating all the, the salads, lettuce, spinach, broccoli with every single meal, um, then, then getting enough fiber in, that's the healthiest way to go. So that's the one caveat with the program. When you look at free foods, don't just look at fatty foods. In fact, cutting out fat is a good idea too. So if you replace uh, some uh, like cheese uh, uh, with with some nuts or something like that, then well, the nuts still have fat, but they also have a lot of fiber and the cheese has no fiber at all. What uh, happens so getting if, that yeah. extra fiber. Is there, is there any fiber in like a ribeye steak or anything like that? Or it is pretty much zero? Cause I have quite a few friends that are doing carnivore diet and they'll eat like one or two ribeyes a day. And that's about all they eat. They won't eat any vegetables. Um, one of our friends in Utah, Mike, um, was talking about how he doesn't eat vegetables anymore because they would upset his stomach quite a bit. So he's gone pretty much completely carnivore and he's not diabetic or anything, but I'm just kind of curious how that works and the pros and cons of that. Cause that is becoming a little bit more popular now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, uh, many years ago, um, uh, it, in fact, it was when we went to that conference, the get altitude conference, Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, in having lunch with Dr. Mercola, um, I went to the salad bar and, and, uh, and got my salad and went and sat down he was nowhere to be seen. And he finally shows up with, 
a, uh, a slab of a steak that he went, he went back to the uh, meat section and, and got a, a steak, uh, a raw steak and brought it back and, and peeled the, the plastic off of it. I got a knife and fork and started eating the raw steak. Um, and he says, you want some? I'm like, no, thanks. <laughs> uh, he, he said he had gotten sick a couple of times uh, on uncooked meat. Uh, but, you know, overall, it was it was pretty good and he liked it. Um, so so it, what's funny about that is raw meat actually has everything you need. Uh, it's, uh, you know, but th th that's what our bodies are made of. And, and it has everything. It has zinc. It even has vitamin C. Everybody says meat doesn't have vitamin C. Well, cooked meat, the vitamin C is pretty much destroyed, but, uh, but raw meat actually does contain vitamin C enough to live on. So, so um, the one thing that the carnivore diet doesn't have though is fiber. And, and that is really important. So if you look at people who do carnivore diets or who people who have very high protein diets, um, they don't have longevity. You, you won't see longevity among them. Uh, there was a, a, a large study done called the China study that uh, looked at some of that and they found uh, that uh, people who eat carnivore diets tend to have more cancer, uh, they tend to die younger. Um, people who eat very high protein diets do that. So, uh, so carbohydrates cause metabolic problems like diabetes. Uh, proteins cause uh, cancer, essentially your mTOR gene gets turned on when you're eating high proteins uh, and fats cause insulin resistance and inflammation. So, so the only three things you want to avoid when you're eating are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Um, those are, those are toxic to the body. Uh, so the thing you really want is fiber. And, mm. and that's what I think about the, the, the um, carnivore diet. Uh, is it's it's missing fiber and I and that's really important. So your first part of the question was, does meat have any fiber? Yes, it does. There are proteins in the meat, um, collagen, for example, uh, that are not digestible. So the non-digestible proteins are also a type of fiber there because we don't digest them and it goes into the, the large intestine and, and there are um, bacteria that live on those. And so, but you're going to grow a, a completely different type of bacteria when you're eating a full meat diet or only meat only diet, as opposed to a, uh, with a veg vegetable fiber diet. Mm, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Isn't that interesting. Yeah. Well, good. So we've got quite a few questions coming in and we usually get more as we go. So I wonder if we want to just hop in and start um taking some questions yeah leslie Let's do it. Yeah. yeah we have a lot Let's of questions, questions and we also have a lot of uh really good testimonials that are coming in too so oh, nice. exciting uh this has come up a few times so we may need to highlight this i think on our frequently asked questions reel um uh, but can high blood sugar or type 2 diabetes cause frequent urination and the second part of the question is that I've read saw palmetto is good for the prostate, but how do I know if it's diluted or fake? Ah, uh, good questions. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, the frequent urination, there's a lot of different reasons. And we often talk about this. And if the blood sugar is high, usually it would have to be over 200. Um, if you're in, uh, if you're in Canada, that would be over, I think it's eight. Uh, 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 they, uh, when, when it gets that high, uh, then the, the kidney says, oh my gosh, we have too much need to spill it. Uh, or, or really what happens is it can't absorb it all fast enough. So it spills into the urine and then water goes with it. So you can't just, you know, put crystals of sugar out it has to be dissolved in something and it's dissolved in water so so you make a whole bunch of urine and your your bladder fills up quickly and then you empty it and it fills up quickly and you empty it and it fills up quickly and you go oh my gosh i'm so thirsty you're drinking 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 peeing 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 and that could be from high blood sugar so the answer to that question is absolutely yes um uh, that it can cause frequent ur urination and when it does it means your blood sugar is way too high and you and uh, and that would be a very good reason to start phase one uh, of the program. The second part of the question, the saw palmetto part, is is saw palmetto is actually 
um, really good. Multiple studies have shown uh, that it works for shrinking the prostate, for improving prostate function, uh, and for allowing uh, better urination. Uh, uh, if you have a prostate enlargement problem. So a lot of people have urination problems, frequent urination, but it's not a prostate problem. And, uh, and that's a really important thing to understand. So a lot of people that they go, oh, you know, I have to get up at night five times to pee um, or, or, uh, or I'm urinating frequently during the day or I have a very small bladder or whatever. And so these guys uh, are told, well, it must be your prostate. So they start popping, that's your problem. It's, it's important to find out what the problem is exactly because there are other issues that can happen. Sometimes um, the bladder falls down and it creates sort of a kink in the urethra. Uh, and, and so the urine doesn't come out freely, doesn't flow freely. Uh, that's an entirely different situation. That's more common in women, but it does happen in men too. Um, another issue that could come up is drinking too much. People drinking too much, they, they decrease the salt gradient in the kidney so that they can't concentrate urine. So they're just constantly making urine and get their thirsty. I got to drink as if they had, you know, high blood sugar, same, same kind of thing, not having enough salt. And the, the way to handle that is fluid restriction. So the, the, the second part of the soft palmetto question was, how do I know if it's good? Uh, you know, that's really hard. So there are companies that do testing and, and it'll say on the bottle, this was tested and, and the good companies test before and after. So they test the raw materials coming in and then after it's finished, they'll take uh, you know, some pills from the finished product and be sure that there is at least that much of the terpenoids in the saw palmetto extract. Uh, and so those companies are really good. The ones I use are pure encapsulations uh, is really good, designs for health, um, orthomolecular. Uh, and these are ones that are often harder to find. Now you can get them on Amazon. Now it used to be they would only sell to doctors, but now doctors are selling online. So, so you can pretty much get them uh, online like at Amazon and all those. All right, good stuff. A uh, couple fun comments. Rachel says Valentine's Day was a little detrimental as it was difficult to reject the chocolates that came my way, but I'm doing better since then. Thank you for the great information that you provide. Uh, David said dropped my insulin from 45 to 30. My blood sugars went from the mid 200s to 150, and it took three weeks. Thank you. I think wow. it's on good work a little bit there. Uh, okay. Love that. I love hearing that. Okay. Uh, let's see. I thought there was one more I was going to read. Mike got a 6.0 A1C dropped 64 pounds and waiting three months for his next wow. A1C. Awesome. So, 64 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Uh, let's see here. Okay, this is from our friend Scott. What is the best supplement to help with insulin resistance? Okay, um, the, the best supplement. Uh, it's the one that works the best, but, uh, but don't think of ins a, a supplement as this is gonna fix my insulin resistance problem. Supplements, that's, that's, not, that's not what they do. Um, if you have insulin resistant, that is resistance, then there may be a few things you need. So um, chromium, uh, selenium, uh, vanadium, uh, and uh, vitamin D, uh, magnesium. Uh, and if you're deficient in any of those, you get, you're more likely to get insulin resistance. And then there are other supplements uh, such as bitter melon, uh, cinnamon, cinnamon bark extract, uh, and uh, berberine. Uh, so there, there isn't like uh, just one thing called synochroma. Synochroma has been deficient that everybody should take because it's so, they're common deficiencies that can lead to insulin resistance. Um, and then cinnamon on top of that is added to, it's called synochroma. Uh, the cinnamon bark extract then 
kind of acts in the way that metformin does. So it's a nice way to replace uh, the something like uh, pills that you're taking to, to be able to get off the medication. Uh, and uh, it's, it, and it works well. Um, I've seen some out there. And the reason I formulated this as opposed to using something else that's out there uh, or some, someone else's formula is because mostly what I see is people put uh, in their supplement for, for insulin resistance, a small amount of all of them. They just have brrr, this whole list of, Oh, this one has a uh, bitter melon and gymnema celestre, uh, and it has berberine and it has cinnamon bark extract. And, and, uh, and they put tiny amounts of all of them in there. And uh, I haven't found that to be very useful to have tiny amounts of, of a whole bunch of things. So, so we chose just to make it okay. The nutrients that are necessary that everybody needs. In fact, it's so much so that it's a supplement I give to a lot of people who don't have diabetes because because uh, they, I test them and they come in low in chromium, low in vanadium, low in selenium, they need vitamin D. And I go, well, you know what? This is a great formula and it'll also keep you from getting uh, insulin resistance. So um, that, that's why th that I did it that way, but it's not the only way. Today's Fixed Blood Sugar webinar is sponsored by Cinechroma, our best-selling advanced blood sugar support formula. Now, thousands of people around the world are taking Cinechroma every day as part of their program to fix their blood sugar using natural ingredients that simply work. Now, Dr. Saunders formulated Cinechroma to meet key nutritional deficiencies that most people have unknowingly suffered from for far too long. With Cinechroma, you get a blend of six key ingredients. The perfect combination of chromium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2, which it's important to take those two together, selenium, vanadium, and our 10 to 1 cinnamon bark extract. Now, if you're not already using Cinechroma, I highly recommend that you give it a try and see how it helps your energy, your weight, and your blood sugar numbers. You can get Cinechroma at bartonnutrition.com or on Amazon. If you get it at bartonnutrition.com, you can enter the coupon code webinar25 and you'll save 25% off at bartonnutrition.com. But I realize some people like to go to Amazon as well. So anyways, Cinechroma, highly recommend. Now let's get you back to the fixed blood sugar webinar. Okay, our friend Krish is here. Krish is wondering, uh, Let's see, Chris is taking Cinechroma, which has 5,000 IU of vitamin D3, and of course, also vitamin K2. But I'm getting cold and sinus blockade often. Um, the vitamin D level is above normal, so what else do I need to do to increase my immunity and not get the nasty sinus issues? Oh, good question, Chris. Okay. So um, vitamin D might not be your problem, um, a lack of vitamin D. 5,000 should be enough. You know, if, if you, like you say, you test it in the normal level, um, that's fine. Uh, but it might not be from, uh, from viruses that are causing that. There's other reasons for getting inflammation. For example, allergies, um, pollen, mold, dust mites. Uh, and so you might want to start looking for allergies and that, that might relieve that chronic congestion um, <clears throat> I've also seen food sensitivities cause it, uh, when they did a study on, uh, well, it was actually for omeprazole, a stomach, they were, do, they were putting, uh, scopes in people's stomachs and taking biopsies, uh, just to, to look at their ulcers and all of that for the, for medication, uh, omeprazole. Uh, and what they found was, uh, about, I think it was 2% of the people they tested had celiac disease. And they went to them and said, you have celiac disease. And they said, uh-uh, no, I don't. My, I'm fine. I can eat anything I want. I have, I have an iron stomach, uh, no problems, no gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, no stomach pains, no problems at all. And they go, nope, we did a biopsy. You have celiac disease. It's not a question mark, you have it. So go off, go off um, gluten. Uh, you know, eat gluten free, no wheat, no barley, no rye. And, uh, and so when they did, they often found funny things like, you know, stomach, no difference, but their dandruff went away, 
their allergies went away, their chronic rhinitis went away, uh, their, the rashes or itchy skin that they had um, disappeared when they went off the gluten. So they were having a reaction, but it was showing up on their skin or in their nose or somewhere else. That's that, that may be, it's not only from gluten. I'm not saying you have to do gluten free, but you know, that might be the one. Or sometimes I've seen proteins, casein, uh, often get congestion. And that's because uh, uh, Dr. Christopher, uh, a, a famous uh, uh, herbalist, uh, from a hundred years ago, uh, said that uh, that milk is a, a mucus producing uh, um, food, uh, and and it does. And but some people react to it and they get this chronic, you know, runny nose, chronic rhinitis, uh, and then you don't have to use the nose sprays. You get off milk. So it's not only wheat, wheat, milk, um, but you know, just about anything, if you're eating it on a regular basis can cause a chronic runny nose too. All right, awesome. Lise is back. Should I take my BGL before each meal, uh, blood glucose, I'm assuming, before each meal, then two hours after a meal? BGL. The blood, glucose. Uh, blood, glu blood glucose level um, before each meal and two hours after meal. Okay. Um, well, if you want more information or for some reason you need more information, yeah. And if you're doing it that frequently, you should get one of the implants, uh, one of the patches mm -hmm. that, that, that you can, yeah, the, the continuous uh, monitors uh, that you can you can uh, just just wave over it and and you get your graph and your graph comes out and you know you wave over it and it'll it'll keep the graph for like an hour or two hours or whatever so every hour you can look at it and you can see what happens with every meal so that's one way to do it is uh, it, it, you know if you want to do it that frequently so the question of should you is do you need that much information uh, generally with type two the answer is no. It doesn't require that much information because what you really want to know over time is, is insulin resistance. Uh, it is if you have uh, your blood glucose is going up and down. Okay. You know, that, that may be a problem, but over time we want to see insulin resistance drop down and, uh, and the glucose can be, give you an idea of that. But if all you did was morning glucose and you're going, um, okay, it's, you know, it's generally 200s, I got to bring it down, 150s, I got to bring it down. Uh, and, and if it's generally 70 to 90, then you're pretty good. And, and so if all you did was once a day, that's generally adequate for type two. All right, Sylvia is asking, as a pre-diabetic, how often do I check my sugar levels? Ah, same question. Okay. Uh, as a pre-diabetic, um, if you if you have a blood glucose monitor, just do it in the morning, just like before breakfast, fasting. Uh, it gives you an idea, uh, and as you do it day after day, you're getting an idea. Of, oh, I'm generally in the hundreds, generally in the high hundreds, low hundreds. Uh, or if you're if you're in Canada, you're in the sixes and sevens or tens. That's meaningful. Um, but uh, but what you want is in Canada between four and five and in, in the United States, uh, or, or uh, if you're using, was it milligrams per deciliter, it's, uh, it's between 70 and 90. All right. Uh, we have a few questions that have come in. I'm just gonna address these really quick. How long should I be on phase one? Uh, we have that on our frequently asked questions. Should we just post the link to that maybe Joe so that people can find all of these? Would that be the yeah. best thing to do? Because uh, yeah. Dr. Saunders goes through all of that. So Thomas, I think you asked that question. We're going to post a link for that. Um, let's see here. It was a really, okay, I'm trying to read through some of these questions. And, I like this question. Yeah. Lisa's wondering, is it okay to have water during a meal? Oh, well, that's a great question. Uh, gosh, you know, we did our water. Uh, uh, we did our water um, webinar last week. And, uh, and I didn't mention that, but um, actually 
personally, I think it's better not to drink during a meal. So uh, there are several reasons for that. One is the first thing that the reason I brought it up was because and there was a study done on comparing people who were eating and if they drank, uh, how, how many calories they had in a day, if they drank water or soda or diet soda, uh, you know, they, they had comparisons, uh, how much weight they gained and everything. And, and if they drank water, they gained as much weight as if they drank soda or diet soda. And so it turns out that the, the, in following up on that, they found that people who drink with a meal eat 30% more calories than people who don't drink with a meal at all. And the reason is because your saliva um, is necessary to get the food down. And when you're done eating, your brain shuts off your saliva, just goes thump, done. Uh, actually, it's the stomach, it's hormones. But anyway, the saliva shuts off. And when you don't have any saliva, you can chew and chew and chew and chew, but it's not going to swallow down very easily. So people, they pick up their glass and they just automatically wash it down, wash it down. So they they keep eating when they're done. When, when, the, when the brain says, I'm done, they just keep eating and washing it down with water. Uh, so my answer is no. Uh, the, other one, uh, the other study was on dilution of the acid in the stomach that you get better digestion of proteins when you don't drink water or any liquid with, with the meal. So what I do is uh, I eat a meal and then I drink water between meals. You're muted. Oops. <laughs> the good thing is that it eventually tells me that I'm muted. It knows I'm trying to talk. <laughs> then the thing comes up on the screen and said, you're muted. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we talked a couple weeks ago about sleep apnea, but this is a, a good question. Not if, but when I reverse my diabetes, will it help to reverse sleep apnea or is that chronic? Oh, great question. Okay. So, um, uh, most people with sleep apnea, if you have the, uh, the type of sleep apnea, um, that is related to the, the throat closing off as opposed to central sleep apnea. There's, there's different types. But if you have the type of sleep apnea that's related to being overweight, it will absolutely make a difference. When you get your blood sugar under control, um, it was shown that 80%-ish, I think it was a little more than that, 80% of people with, with uh, the peripheral sleep apnea, the overweight sleep apnea, um, would... Uh, completely resolve the sleep apnea just by losing 30 pounds. So, so yes, the answer is you can expect improvements in the sleep apnea, which is really important because sleep apnea causes a lot of stress, stress releases, stress hormones, stress hormones make you resistant to insulin. And that's part of the cycle. So when you lose the, lose the weight, uh, and you no longer have sleep apnea, then that, you know, cuts off that cycle. And, uh, and it'll allow you to maintain it better. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. We have kind of a three, three part question here from Mike. So I'm going to try to make sure I can get all of this. Uh, let's see. A1C was 6.0. He's wondering if that's pre-diabetic. Um, but more of the question is I have uh, peripheral neuropathy in my feet and I have urinary frequency. Doctor says you're not diabetic. You don't need to change your blood sugar or diet. And says there are, they are quacks, I think is what that says. Um, I'm doing keto and intermittent <laughs> fasting, 16 hour minimum. I do not consume any sugar. And I read all the labels and 90% of the stuff goes back on the shelf when shopping. Also did food sensitivity test. Um, IGG testing found 33 foods out of 200. Uh, let's see, had all of this change happen because I had inflammation in my joints and body pain. Everything is stable. And now even back pain is gone. My new primary thinks maybe I was a full on diabetic and I didn't know it. Any insight on this topic? Oh, absolutely. Wow. You've done wonderful things. You know what? That's it. That's the program right there. You did it. Uh, and, and, stuff. And yeah, yeah. And it reversed the arthritis, which it's supposed to do because why? Because it's you're not getting the inflammation anymore. So so that's excellent. Hemoglobin A1C of six is pre-diabetes. And and so that's why the doctor says, Oh, you don't have diabetes. 
That's what we're taught in medical school. Okay, it's important that you recognize this because it's not just for diabetes. When you go into your eye doctor, the eye doctor says, oh, you have a 20% cataract in your eye. Let's wait until it's like uh, 70% when you're almost blind and then we'll take it out and put a, a, a lens in there, uh, an artificial lens in there. Um, and um, if you had heart disease and, and you go to the cardiologist, cardiologist does a catheter and says, oh, you have a 50% blockage of your arteries. Uh, that's no big deal. Wait till it gets 80% and then we'll do something about it. That is the way we're taught in medical school. Don't do anything until it becomes crisis, right? Uh, and then it's like, oh my gosh, you got to get this done right now. Uh, this is really bad. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, hemoglobin A1C 6.0, uh, you don't have diabetes, don't worry. You don't have to change a thing. Um, and uh, it, let's wait until it gets to be diabetes and then we'll go, oh my gosh, this is horrible. You're going to die. Um, you better take some medication or uh, shots now they have and all this other stuff. So, um, so that's the way that, that we're taught to work in medical school. It's very good at treating acute illness. Very good. If you have something acute, if you're in a car accident, you have fractured bones, if you have bleeding in your brain, if you have uh, a mass somewhere, uh, you know, uh, this is this is where you want to go see a doctor and you want uh, treatment. You want to go to a hospital. You know, you want to have that acute treatment. We are so good at that. So we just wait till the chronic things become acute and then treat them because we're really good at that. <laughs> that's that. That's that's the way it goes. So um, that part, the hemoglobin A1C prediabetes, you did exactly the right thing, reversing that process. And I'm hoping next time your hemoglobin A1C is going to be well, um, way down in the fives and uh, ideally get it to around 5.0. That'll be uh, ideal. And then the second part of that question, I missed. Okay, the, let's see. What, 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 right, right after that, he said his hemoglobin A1C was 6.0. And then what was... Leslie, what was the next? Oh, there was and, something uh, I wanted to comment on. Had inflammation and joints and um, body pain, everything went away. Wondering if he was a full-on diabetic. Yeah. 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 Um, no, probably not because all of that. Oh, it that's what it was. Right. You already, you already have neuropathy. And that's really important because the, the uh, long-term, the blood sugar being a little elevated causes the uh, insulin receptors or the glucose transport proteins uh, to, to decrease in the nerve, in the nervous system. So uh, when you have that, before you ever get diabetes, you can already have damage to the nerves. So that's really important that number one, you reverse that process and get some low blood sugar. You want your blood sugar to get down into the 70 to 90 range. Um, and your hemoglobin A1C would be great if you can put it in the 5.0 range. Uh, and then at the same time for the neuropathy, uh, take benfotiamine and, and uh, alpha lipoic acid, uh, which are found in the Nervala. If you go online, you can find that. So Nervala has both of them in exactly the right amounts and start with two a day. Uh, and after two months, then you, you uh, go down to one a day. All right. He did ask some questions about what exactly he should be eating right now or what you would recommend, you know, just because you had mentioned, okay, no fats, no protein, no meat. So what do people eat? What should we be doing? And how does that tie into the diabetes solution kit? What? I can't have fat. I can't have protein. I can't have carbohydrates. Let's laugh. You can have some water, <laughs> but I hope it's filtered. Water. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fiber, and, and, and we talked about that. We actually have a whole webinar on fiber a few weeks back. Um, and, uh, and so getting enough fiber is very important, but it's not, it's not zero carbs and zero fat and, and zero protein. Of course, that those are, you know, your body is made of those. That's where you get your energy and your structure and everything. Um, so you need some, it's, uh, it's just that too much of any of those is bad. So uh, what I wanted to emphasize was, yes, we make a very low carbohydrate diet to shut off the sink so that you're not spilling over the water. 
Um, so that's, that's the purpose of it. But I, I wanted to emphasize that then going on a carnivore diet and eating fat and, and meat all the time is not necessarily healthy either. Get enough carbohydrates, don't overeat. Uh, and by the way, cut off all those carbs too and get, and get rid of them. I think that's, uh, that's important, Dr. Saunders, because a lot of people, like if they look at a keto diet, then they feel like, or they, they think that they can pretty much eat as much fat as they want. But if they're eating like 3000 or 4,000 calories of fat a day, that's too much. And so it's really right. that balance. And um, so we do exactly. talk about getting rid of, you know, the carbohydrates for the most part and getting, you know, really 20 grams or less of carbs, mainly through vegetables and maybe a little bit of high fiber fruits, but um and, and then, yeah, meats and um, avocado, and avocado, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's important because some people just go like, oh, I can have as much as I want you know, as long as it's not carbs. And then it's like, yeah, but then you have yeah. other issues. So, Right. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Lisa's asking when checking nutrition facts, is the sugar content included in the amount of carbs? Yeah, yes, yes. Oh, oh yeah, you know, we go, we go through that very specifically in the, uh, in the Diabetes Solution Kit, how to read a label. Mm -hmm. uh, and so total carbohydrates include sugar. And then, uh, and then it'll say sugars and fiber. And so if you look at the, the, the sugars, uh, total sugars, right? And then fiber. I think there's total sugars and fiber. Total sugars will include fiber. So you subtract the fiber out of the total sugars and that gives you the starches and, and sugars, the digestible ones. Okay. Uh, Mike says, I'm already taking Cinechroma, Nervala and Metformin. I ordered the chromium from Barton. When it arrives, am I supposed to take all of them? And do I have to worry about low sugar? No, just take one pill at a time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, the, the, the Cinechroma will, will help insulin sensitivity, but it doesn't lower blood sugar. That's an important distinction between what something like um, a glipizide or gliburide or, or uh, some of those medications will actually drop your blood sugar Whereas Cinechroma won't drop your blood sugar. All it does is make you more sensitive to insulin. So your pancreas is still making insulin. Your pancreas just will make less insulin because it doesn't need as much because as it's making insulin, the blood sugar is dropping down and then it goes, oh, I don't need any more insulin. So, so the, the advantage of doing it that way is you won't get hypoglycemia. The other part is that Nervala, for example, those don't lower blood sugar at all. They're not really for blood sugar. Um, the, the, the key is what you're eating. The key is to shut off the tap so that you're not, you know, filling up, overflowing the sink, shut off the tap. And that's by decreasing the amount of food you eat and getting rid of, especially the carbohydrates. All right. Let's go back and answer this question about how long should I be on phase one? It is good to review this. So we'll let you take that. Okay. As long as you need to. So let's say you like the, the, the last guy that had the hemoglobin A1C of six. Uh, and uh, so you have a hemoglobin A1C 6.0. That's not really diabetic. Uh, technically, uh, it's, it's uh, somewhat insulin resistant. Um, within a couple of weeks, maybe of being on phase one, uh, you may have your blood sugars consistently in the 70 to 90 range in the morning. Uh, if that's the case, then, then you can start moving on to phase two. And that's only a matter of weeks. Uh, like, like he said, in three weeks, uh, he's already feeling better. His blood sugars are down from 200s to 150s. Uh, that's, that's all it may take. Whereas if you have a hemoglobin A1C of 11, and, uh, and you've had uh, diabetes for nine years, well, you can't expect only a couple of weeks on phase one. It's gonna be, you know, six months or a year. And uh, my program in my office, when I had patients come in, um, I had a, a, a prepaid program where it was outlined for six months. 
And, and this is what you did. We had a nutritionist and a health coach and uh, two doctors and IV vitamins and sauna and hyperbaric oxygen. And we put people on programs to, to get them back to health, but they were like six or nine months long. So that's kind of the range where, where we found we could get people back to health. Okay, from Anonymous, is it a good idea to take iodine every day? And if so, how much? Okay, Anonymous. Um, iodine uh, is a necessary nutrient. We can't survive without it. And it's not found in our soils. Uh, as, as the more research is done, uh, they're finding more people with iodine deficiency, especially women. And uh, iodine deficiency is so common uh, that even in high school girls in the Midwest, they found goiter. Uh, and people think that they're getting iodine from salt. And they think that beautiful pink Himalayan salt has iodine in it. Uh, or, or their kosher salt or sea salt, right? Sea salt, that's, you know, you get iodine from kelp, right? It's gotta be in sea salt. No, practically zero. There's almost none um, in, uh, in sea salt. The kelp and seaweed uh, concentrates iodine. So th that has iodine in it, uh, but the sea salt does not have iodine in it. So you're not getting iodine from salt unless you buy salt that says iodized on it. If it doesn't say iodized, it doesn't have iodine. So, um, so then uh, they told us, don't eat salt. And, and so now everybody's so nice and they're going, well, you know, I got to obey my cardiologist. He told me not to eat any salt, so I'm not eating any salt. So now we're back to where we were 100 years ago when they first discovered that goiter was being caused by a lack of salt because there's no salt in the soils where we grow most of our food in the Midwest. So what do you do about that? Well, um, there you go, the salt supplement. And you know what, if you take it every day, it's okay. If you take it once a week, it's okay. If you take it once a month, it's okay. It doesn't matter. What's really cool about iodine is you take a large dose of iodine, let's say 10 milligrams. Uh, and, and when you take that, your uh, thyroid especially, but your other glands too, and in, in Women, their breast glands and their hormone, the, the, um, the glands that convert uh, or the enzymes that convert uh, estrogens, um, they suck up the iodine. They just like, they suck it up and whatever they don't, whatever they don't need uh, just gets excreted in the urine. So uh, one of the ways of testing if someone is sufficient in iodine, because how do you know? You know, you do a level and what does that mean? Uh, someone just ate some. Uh, so there, there is a test though. And the way the test is they give you 50 milligrams of iodine. You pop the pill and then you collect your urine for 24 hours and you should have 49.9 milligrams of iodine in your urine in order to be sure that you're sufficient, that you're, you're getting sufficient iodine. If your glands are sucking up a significant portion of that iodine, um, then you know you're, you're not sufficient but you don't need to do the test. Remember, 49.9 milligrams of iodine is excreted when you take a 50 milligram dose, if you have enough. If you don't have enough, what happens? Well, all those glands suck it up. And then whatever's not used, the 48 milligrams is excreted. So if you took 50 milligrams a day, you'd just be peeing out 50 milligrams a day. If, uh, but, so I always say, just take like 10 milligrams once a week. And I know that I've seen in that, health food stores, 12.5 milligrams, whatever, 25, whatever, you can do that, whatever, just take it once a week. And, uh, and that iodine supplement once a week, the, your glands will suck it all up and they'll be fine for a week till the next dose comes in. And this would be a good chance that we can tell people about our own neurometabolic iodine, which you can get on bartonnutrition.com. And so yeah. he's got 150, or let's see, 150 micrograms of usp grade iodine so yeah um, see if you took you one of those that? droppers yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so if you took one of those droppers a week um you, that would be plenty but this is formulated specifically for someone to take every day that's so the 150 micrograms um that's that's more of a daily dose yeah mm -hmm. so you can take one, one dropper every day and and what's easy about this there's no pills you just take a dropper you put a squeeze it in your water, juice, whatever, and, yeah. uh, and drink it down. 
I like how it makes my water taste. Actually, it's pretty good stuff. So yeah, you can get this. Really? Any, yeah, I like it. <laughs> but you if like you uh, flavor, I'll, I'll mention too. If you're uh, watching the webinar, you can get a 25% discount on on all of our products at BartonNutrition.com and just use the coupon code. Uh, webinar 25 and you'll save 25%. Just enter that coupon code on the checkout page after you've added uh, the products to your cart. But yeah, this we don't talk a whole lot about this iodine product, but this is really good stuff made uh, by a friend of mine up in Canada that owns a manufacturing plant and he sources, he's got a process to get it into the water, which is a unique process that um, maybe you could talk about how that works compared to other regular iodine. That yeah, that's make. different. That's different. No. Yeah, iodine norm normally doesn't dissolve in water, so it has to be um, uh, uh, molecular. It'll, it'll dissolve in alcohol. So most of the iodine. What's what's that? It says molecular I two uh, in distilled water. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. So that so that that form uh, will go into water, but. The, most of the uh, the preparations of iodine have alcohol because iodine dissolves in alcohol. Mm -hmm. And we can't say that this can't cures cancer or anything, uh, but uh, women especially want to take iodine, especially if you're not living or if you're not eating a lot of seafood from the ocean, because um, there's been studies that show women that are deficient in iodine have a greater tendency to get different types of cancers. So Highly important, especially if you're uh, a woman. So. Yeah, and, and and that's true. You know, there's there's three things that women can take to prevent breast cancer, 50%. Mm. So they can cut their risk 50%. Now think about that. Mammograms cut your risk 3% at best. Um, and, and you can cut your risk uh, so much more by taking vitamin D, iodine, and selenium. So if all you had was synechroma and iodine, that would cut your risk of breast cancer by 50% according to the studies that were done on uh, cancer. Mm, wow. So yeah, amazing. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. All right, I'm going to throw one more question at you and then we know you need to go because you have patients to see. So yeah. uh, Elise is asking when my doctor decides to lower my diabetes medication doses, which would be preferable to diminish metformin, Trulicity, or Jardians? Okay. Um, well, uh, my preference would be get, get rid of the Jardians first, the Trulicity second, and then metformin third. Uh, so that, that would be the order that, uh, that ideally they should drop off. Um, of course, whoever's prescribing them for you, you should uh, discuss it with them and say, um, you know, what, what, what would be a better one? Uh, metformin uh, doesn't drop your blood sugar and the other two can potentially drop your blood sugar. Um, but the way they work is in a completely different way that each one of them works very differently. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Today's Fixed Blood Sugar webinar is sponsored by Easy Relief Magnesium Spray. Now, this is fast absorbing magnesium that is a topical spray that you spray on your skin. And it is vital for over 300 functions in your body. Now, the nice thing about this magnesium is, first of all, uh, you don't have to ingest it, so you can't take too much of this. Your skin is great at absorbing only what it needs. So you spray about 30 to 50 sprays of this per day. And I personally do it uh, two to three times a day of 10 to 15 sprays. And I do it on my chest and my legs typically. And this is going to um, correct the deficiencies that most people have. Now, how do you know if you need magnesium? Usually the symptoms are you have... Uh, muscle cramps, trouble sleeping, um, if you're fatigued, if you have erratic blood sugar, if you experience any type of numbness or tingling, or if you feel down in the dumps or feeling blue. Now those are all different types of symptoms that a lot of times magnesium can help with. So highly recommend this product of Easy Relief Magnesium. It is super easy. You spray it on. You don't have to um, take, take a pill or anything like that and you don't have to worry about absorbing too much. 
This absorbs quickly. Now this will get into your body in less than two minutes into the bloodstream and circulating through. So it's a lot faster than if you take um, a pill with magnesium in it. So super important for uh, me metabolism, metabolic function. Um, if, if you have insulin resistance, magnesium uh, will probably help with that. There's a connection between low magnesium and insulin resistance. It's great for relaxation and sore muscle relief. It helps you sleep. Great for muscle cramps and achy joints. Um, there's no sticky residue. So a lot of times if you find a different magnesium spray, it's not bonded with water like this process has done. So this doesn't leave a sticky resu residue at all. So it's great. It doesn't sting. Um, it improves your mood. And there's just all sorts of different, again, there's 300 different functions that magnesium is used in the body. Highly recommend it. It's 365 day guarantee, just like anything. You can get it at bartonnutrition.com. And if you wanna save 25% in addition to our already discounted prices, uh, use this coupon code webinar25 as a coupon code. Um, again, that's at bartonnutrition.com and Easy Relief Magnesium. Highly recommend it. Dr. Saunders approved. It's all natural and safe. Get yours today. All right, thanks. Now back to the webinar. All right, I think we're done. All right. I got a interesting hey. reply back from our friend, Mike in Utah. Um, so he doesn't do 100% carnivore, but he does about 90%. He simplifies his diet to mostly meat, fish and eggs. Uh, only eating the least toxic plants has been a game changer for me. So I do eat a little fiber, but not much. And that's been a dramatic improvement in digestion to, re to reduce fiber dramatically. So this is, this is interesting. This might make for a, another topic um, for one of our webinars here. But I really only eat a little, little of these plants. Squash, sweet potato, potatoes, carrots, olives, avocado, cucumber, coffee, and wine. Sim simplicity of diet has been amazing actually so that, that actually might be a good topic like just um like minimizing your diet and choices of food and like finding like what are your top 10 foods that you know that you enjoy and that are also healthy for you and kind of customizing that for for success so what do you think and of that like now, supplements he takes too yeah yeah, one of, one of the, uh, there's a, a group of people that does a, a single food diet. So uh, each meal is just one food. So they have a potato and that's, that's one meal. And then they'll have a steak and that's another meal. And there's nothing else and not, you know, there's no, there's no rounded out plate of food with this much carbs and this much protein and this much fat and whatever um, fiber. Um, and uh, I've always thought that was kind of interesting. And that's one I've never done. I usually do every diet I recommend. And I don't know that I've ever recommended that one. So I've never tried it, but uh, it does sound interesting to me. Simplicity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Dr. Saunders. We'll let you go and uh, we'll close out sure. the webinar here. So we'll see you next time. Have a great day. All right. Bye. And uh, to everybody here, just thanks for joining us today. Lots of great questions asked and answered. So I hope you found value from that put it in the chat tell us uh tell us if you got some value from our our webinar today put a little something in there i'd love to hear back from you guys and uh tell us you know if you had any takeaways or or any remaining questions that maybe we can help answer for you as well um also just a reminder um if you're watching this you can go to bartonwebinar.com that's kind of our main site where we list um where you can get a copy of the diabetes solution kit um, any of the supplements that we've talked about, Barton Nutrition has a lineup of 10 different supplements now. Most of them are in regards to blood sugar and different things like that with digestion or magnesium and um, insulin control and things like that. So check that out. All of the links are on bartonwebinar.com. And we are adding frequently asked questions on there as well. So, um, and you can, you can also register for future uh, webinars. We do these every Thursday at 11 a.m. Central Time, and we love to have you join us. And as you can tell, Dr. Saunders is a wealth of information, and he's he's just a great person. He loves to help people. He's um, you know he's been a game changer for a lot of people. So, uh, anyways, uh, thanks for joining us. We see a lot of uh, a lot of good comments here. We appreciate you guys, and 
yeah, we'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your week and God bless. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Leslie.